a dry lake bed in Oregon. Uh, it was seen in the newspapers around there in the area when this happened. Uh, just an incredible story. If you go on Google, you can find this. Uh, uh, it's east of the Steens Mountains uh, there in Oregon. But uh, just an incredible story because from 9,000 feet is what you're looking at right here. And you can clearly see what is there in front of you here, this huge pattern was scored into the dry lake bed in Oregon and uh, just an unbelievable uh, story because there were some pilots that flew over the area they're from the uh, Idaho National Guard a lieutenant in the in the National Guard there uh, flew over this location and uh, here's what it looked like from 9,000 uh, feet up in the air you can clearly see just an unbelievable pattern this is a Sriantra Mandela formation uh, it's an ancient uh, uh, symbol and literally, this is a geometrically perfect uh, depiction of this ancient symbol. Uh, all the lines line up. Everything is correctly done. Now, these are the four border lines that go around the entire formation. And these lines are literally 10 inches wide and 3 inches deep. Every single line in this entire formation is 10 inches wide and 3 inches deep. So again, this is on hard pan desert type uh, dirt. So it's very compacted, very difficult to score into this type of material, especially a 10 inch trough that's three inches deep throughout this entire um, depiction here. So, uh, you know, who knows what made this? All we know is uh, a few things that we know about this. Number one, there was no cars uh, in this area. There's no tire marks into this area. It's in a very remote location. So it's out kind of in the middle of the nowhere. And all of a sudden, here you find this uh, incredibly huge uh, looking uh, crop uh, circle looking type uh, of image in the middle of the desert. I mean, I've never seen this before. Uh, but again, this happened at a time uh, when uh, you know there was no kind of, of tools that you could use for this kind of a formation in 1990 uh, and pull this off in a very short period of time. I mean, this thing uh, had to have taken some time to be done uh, if it was humans making something like this. However, if this was something that was non-human that did this, that had some kind of higher technology, well, you might be able to carve something like this out of the desert uh, in no time at all. Because, uh, again, uh, the pilots hadn't seen this on the ground uh, as they flew over this area. And this is a training area where they fly planes over all the time uh, for the military. No one saw this. Just all of a sudden, August 10th rolls around, 1990, and these pilots fly over, and all of a sudden, whammo, there this thing is in the middle of the desert. Uh, but, again... This was not done by humans, uh, it looks like, because uh, there's no tire marks, no footprints, no kind of score marks uh, from machines that you would think that could do something like this. Uh, so how do you make something like this in the middle of a dry lake bed? Uh, and again, this is 13.3 miles long. If you go to each one of these grooves and you measure the distance around this entire formation through all of these lines, it's 13.3 miles long. You tell me, how do you make a groove 13.3 miles long, 10 inches wide, 3 inches deep, into very compact, hard dirt? Not very easy to do. <laughs> I mean, even if you had a backhoe, that would be almost impossible to do something like that and really make it look perfect like this formation is. It's absolutely perfect uh, perfection in terms of the lines, the formation. Uh, and I believe there's like seven or eight triangles inside the center of this thing. Uh, so it's just an incredible formation, again, in the middle of a dry lake bed. Uh, so don't know who did it, but I